Hey friends, I'm back with another video. I want to discuss my number one dividend growth stock of all time in the video today. I am yielding 11.2% simple dividend yield on cost on my first tranche of this stock that I bought in 2014. And it is such an amazingly powerful dividend growth stock. In fact, I have a bucket right here from the Home Depot. Look at this. It's filled with all sorts of goodies. I want to go through this because I know that my number one dividend growth stock of all time, it's somewhere in this bucket. So the first thing I have is this pouch from Louis Vuitton. Check it out. This is LVMH Brands. This is an awesome company. I don't own it. It's not my number one dividend growth stock. But if I were to own a brand in the fashion space, this would be it. But is the number one dividend growth stock, is it somewhere inside this pouch? Let's see. Uh, unfortunately not, but I have a ton of dividend checks as I always do. So let's keep moving on here. Is Oh boy, here it is. Is it Nike? This is my Nike Air Jordans right here inside the bucket. I plan to wear this actually later today. This is an amazing company. They increase the dividend on average very quickly. So it's definitely a superior dividend growth stock, but is it my number one dividend growth stock? No, I actually don't own this company, but looking forward into the future, this could be the number one dividend growth stock looking out into the future. But what else is in this bucket here from the Home Depot? Let's see, is it somewhere in here? Starbucks? Oh boy, never leave home without it. This is actually my number one largest position in my portfolio. Is it the number one best dividend growth stock? Not quite yet, but I actually think it could be in the future. And so this is a very, very solid contender. And in fact, when it comes to Starbucks, I saw actually in this bucket, I've got something else from Starbucks. This is the at-home uh, Frappuccino. Check it out. The reason I have this though, is this one is actually to my knowledge distributed by PepsiCo, which is another stock I own, core four dividend stock. Is it the number one dividend growth stock? No, they're growing the dividend a little bit too slowly uh, to be on that list, but it is a very solid solid, stable, amazing company. But what else do I have in here? Let's keep going. Oh, this is an important one. This is actually my Apple Watch. And so Apple is one of the largest positions in my portfolio. It has a low starting dividend yield, low payout ratio, but they are increasing the dividend quickly. The last increase though is a little slow. And so it's not my number one dividend growth stock, but could it be in the future? Quite possibly because their payout ratio is so low. Okay. I have one last thing in here, but well, this isn't my number one dividend growth stock. Coca-Cola, boy, I appreciate their recent dividend increase, but their dividend increases, they're a little bit on the slower side. It's not the number one dividend growth stock because to be a growth stock, a dividend growth stock, it's a company that's increasing the dividend very quickly. It's a stock that maybe the starting yield it doesn't have to be too high, but the yield on cost could be very high, like I'm achieving this 11.2% um, because they grow the dividend so quickly. In fact, my number one dividend growth stock, it's increasing the dividend on average by 15.2% per year over the last five years. And I look at this bucket and it is empty. But wait a minute, this is the number one dividend growth stock. It's the Home Depot, of course, of course, it is the bucket. It's the bucket that just keeps on giving. And so that's my metaphor today. All of this cool stuff that I bought, it's coming out of the Home Depot bucket. And why is that? They are yielding for me on my first tranche from 2014, a staggering 11.2% yield on cost. And by the way, when I'm getting ready for these dividend investing videos, I always like to listen to a rap album. And I was listening to the Mr. Smith album by L. LL Cool J last night. And um, he has a song on there, Hey Lover, that's a really popular song. But the one I was listening to was Hollis to Hollywood, where he talks about metaphors. And I want to share today that this bucket, this is the metaphor for dividend growth investing. There is so much that can be contained and can come out of this bucket. And um, the Home Depot, my experience with the Home Depot is... Um, living proof of all of that. Get ready everyone for a really exciting dividend stock investing video. Welcome to PPC Ian. This is Dividend Stock Investing for Everyone. 
All right, everyone. So as we get started with the video today, I wanna to go through three key metrics. If there are three things you take away from the video today, they are on this whiteboard right here. It's 15.2%. That's the average growth rate of the Home Depot dividend on average for the last five years. This is a video about dividend growth investing. They grow the dividend over time. The second metric is 11.2% simple yield on cost. That is how much I'm yielding on my first tranche of the Home Depot, not even reinvesting dividends, not even counting my reinvested dividends. That is because I am reinvesting them. And then the third metric is um, 89,250. We'll get to that later. And so I wanna start with something on the screen right now. Check it out. This is really quick, but I wanna share from BMO, Bank of Montreal, certificate of deposit accounts are now yielding 5% as a risk-free FDIC insured um, savings vehicle or investing vehicle, if you will. Now that's taxed as ordinary income, not qualified dividends, which are long-term capital gains, but that is a hard barrier and inflection point to beat. And so when I share the next thing on the screen with you right now, as you can see in front of you right now, the Home Depot metrics, if someone were to buy the Home Depot right now, it is yielding less less than the uh, risk-free rate in that certificate of deposit. The starting dividend yield is 2.8%. And you look at this screen right now, I only highlight one metric because quite frankly, most of the other metrics are somewhat lack luster. There's nothing wrong with them, but they just don't stand out. The metric though that stands out so much that I highlight is 15.2% because yes, the starting dividend yield is only 2.8%, but when that dividend is being increased on average by year, each year by 15.2%, that can turn into a significant yield on cost that can surpass that risk-free rate. And so that's the key thing to keep in mind that they are increasing the dividend. And in fact, as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, they just increased the dividend by another 10%. Even as we're headed into a rocky economy right now, the Home Depot just announced another 10% dividend increase. But all of this brings me to the second metric on my whiteboard today, my yield on cost. And so I wanna share with you my experience investing in this stock. As you can see on the screen in front of you right now, these are the tranches that I bought of the Home Depot in the earlier years, 2014 through 2020. And you can see in 2014, that's when I established a huge percentage of my position. I just kept buying. I only highlight one thing here and that's my simple yield on cost. Remember I just said that the dividend yield for someone that buys the Home Depot today is 2.8%. Here's the secret of dividend investing. I bought the Home Depot at $74.51, but I received the same dividend that someone receives as if they bought it today, which is $8.36 per year. If I take $8.36, I divide it into my purchase price, which is $74.51, I am yielding 11.2%. That's the second metric that I have on my whiteboard today. The secret to dividend stock investing, dividend growth investing, that is, for those that have a lot of time on their hands to wait for dividends to grow over time, is literally to buy world-class companies that are thriving. They're growing their earnings. They're growing their revenue. They can pass along some of that earnings growth to the shareholders in the form of dividend increases. And by just holding on for a long time, but not that long, it hasn't even been a full decade yet, I am yielding 11.2%. But as you can see on the screen in front of you, it wasn't just my first tranche, my second, third, fourth, fifth, so on, so forth. Even the tranche I bought in 2020 at $148.70, I'm yielding 5.6% simple yield on cost, which is higher than the BMO CD rate and it's a qualified dividend, so it's treated much better on a tax efficiency standpoint than that BMO um, certificate of deposit. And so that is my experience with my number one best dividend stock of all time, which again is this bucket that keeps on giving. It is the Home Depot. With that though, I wanna get into a few more slides. If you're enjoying the video today, please go ahead and smash that like button. It really does mean the world to me. It helps these videos reach more people on YouTube. It helps spread the word about dividend growth investing. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I have new videos on the way all the time. And for those of you who can't get enough of PPCE and I have a Patreon, I'm gonna to link to that in the pinned comment below. On Corner Patreon, I have yet another Zoom meetup coming soon. You don't wanna miss out. It's really awesome. These Zoom meetups are so much fun over on Corner Patreon. But as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, I want to go through a few slides just to drive home what I do as a dividend 
growth investor. So first and foremost, why dividend stocks? Why do I buy these stocks that pay dividends? And so all of the stocks that I just shared that were coming out of the bucket, they all pay dividends. The reason I invest in dividends is the fact of the matter is the stock market can go sideways for an extended period of time. The S&P went nowhere from 2000 to 2012. I've had capital appreciation on the Home Depot. In fact, um, on that slide that I was sharing before on my first tranche, I'm up 298%, but I don't really care about that so much because I don't plan to sell. Although it's a nice backup plan, I guess. What I care about is my cash flow, my yield on cost, the fact that I'm yielding 11.2% simple yield on cost. That's what matters because when the stock market is going sideways, I still have cash flow coming through that I can use to pay my bills. It's so much more difficult to be a investor who looks for capital appreciation because there are times in the market where there is no capital appreciation. And then how do you pay your bills? And so something else that I love about dividend stocks that I want to share with all of you is in the U.S., taxes are not owed for single filers earning up to 44625 a year in dividends and married couples filing jointly earning up to 89250 in qualified dividends. Let me take a step back. For, to my understanding, this is not tax advice, but to my understanding, this is the third thing, the third huge metric I want you to remember. For a married couple filing jointly who earns no other income other than dividend, qualified dividends, the type of dividends Home Depot pays out, and that couple earns $89,250 a year or less in 2023, zero taxes are owed to my understanding. Again, not tax advice. Now, if I take that, I divide it by 12. That is um, 7,437 per month. And for a married couple filing jointly who might've already paid off their mortgage, that is a very generous amount of money that can be lived upon tax-free. Dividends are very tax efficient. And this is why I love dividend stock investing. But let me tell you, these are qualified dividends I'm talking about, which is a lot different than non-qualified dividends. But the types of dividends my stocks pay, like the Home Depot, Apple, PepsiCo, Starbucks, these are qualified dividends. And so that's a third metric. But let me keep going. Now that I've shared why I do what I do, I want to talk about some more facts. Check it out on the screen right now. So the next thing I want to go through is there's two types of dividend investors. I'm talking about dividend growth investors today. Dividend growth investors are those that have time to wait, like I did with the Home Depot. The uh, dividend yield starting, it might only be low, like 2.8%, but after even less than 10 years, it can get all the way up to 11.2% by just being patient and investing in companies that are thriving. But there's two types of dividend investors. I just talked about div dividend growth investors, which is bucket two. Bucket one are high yield investors. These are dividend investors who invest in companies that pay a higher dividend to start, but the growth rate is a little slower. Those are investors that uh, need high cash flow right now. I'm actually a blend of the two. You can see some metrics there from my portfolio. My blended portfolio yield is 3.13%. But this year, actually, I'm talking about dividend growth investing today, but I am also really focused on high yielders because I want a little more cash flow right now. I'm getting a little older. I like to pay bills with cash flow. And so having some high yielders in the portfolio is amazing as well. But with dividend growth investing, I'm really speaking in the video today to the types of investors who are willing to wait for yield on cost. And for those that have time on their side, boy, dividend growth investing is so exciting. And so dividend um, growth investing, I have one more slide that I want to share with um, all of you today, and then I'm going to close this thing out. And so check it out on the screen right now. Dividend growth investors that are in bucket two that I'm discussing today, there's really two inflection points that I look at. The first is when my simple yield on cost surpasses 10%. Well, actually, that's the second inflection point, I guess. It's really important for the yield on cost to surpass 10%. And I try to do it within 10 years. Sometimes it might take longer, but the Home Depot for me, it did it in less than 10 years. And so it met that hurdle. But now that certificates of deposit, they're yielding 5%, like I shared with BMO, the first hurdle is just to get over that 5% risk-free rate. And you can see from my example at the Home Depot, I did that with my 2020 tranche already. Although to be fair, I bought that 2020 tranche at deep discount during the uh, pandemic sell-off. Now, keep in mind, though, with that first hurdle with the 5%, it's not apples to apples because the tax consequences of a CD are much higher than qualified dividends. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button. It means the world to me. And before I go today, in terms of full disclosure, I am long the Home Depot, HD, Apple, AAPL, PepsiCo, PEP, Starbucks, SBUX. I am also long 3M, uh, ticker 
MMM as well. Um, in terms of, oh, actually, I'm also long Coca-Cola as well. Can't forget that one, ticker KO. In terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video, it's not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video, it's just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. I'm just sharing my personal journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. Also, this is not tax advice. I'm not a licensed tax advisor. It's possible to lose money in the stock market. Please check out the description below for additional disclosures and disclaimers. I love you all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the comments below and I'll see you in the next dividend stock investing video.